All right, so, um, and we had our whole process and as to how to make that be, feel as believable as possible. And, you know, I had my homework, but I just want to thank Chris Bowers for... Yeah, where's Chris Bowers? Yeah. Uh, the question is for Nick. The uh, letter moments in the movie are really touching. Uh, the question is, were the letters from memory, or were they verbatim, and does a uh, follow-up, does your mother still have those letters? Questions about the letters in the film, very touching, were they verbatim, and do you still have them? Well, it's interesting, I have all of them. My mother kept every letter, but it was my father. And one of the letters said, keep these letters, I want to read them. <laughs> Things, the other guy's reacting at first. 
But what you don't realize until you start to do it, for example, is that we're driving. Often the camera was here so you could see both of us or you could see uh, just the rehearsal. So that camera was where the rear view mirror would be. So I'm looking up like I'm looking at him all the time and all that. And I turn around and he tells me eyes on the road and all that. But a lot of times I'm looking in the rear view. But I wasn't really because camera was there. <laughs> you know? so, so I was just hearing him. So we were going off each other's rhythms, and he wasn't seeing my face either, unless I turned around and then he had to scold me and then turn around again. But um, so when I saw the movie the first time, it was really fun to watch how delicate, how subtle, and these are things that aren't written. What he did, you know, it's like people have said before, you know, in comedy, it's not the joke that makes the joke work; it's the reaction to the joke or the funny line that makes it work. And Especially the early part of the story, it's like I'd say something ridiculous, not thinking it was ridiculous, but to him it was absurd or offensive or whatever. And then watching the movie, you just see how. <laughs> <laughs> and just that little look out the window or adjusting his glass. I mean, you know, I can't even describe how subtle it was, but it was, I was laughing my ass off. I, didn't, I, I mean, I, don't, I could see it a hundred times, and it's just his little, like, the way he reacts, the one I insist that it's German and it's not Russian. <laughs> it's just so, or even when you, then your sort of needling side comes out, how is that? It's all <laughs> Then I'm looking at it, then I know. You know. But the rest of the time, I don't know. And I didn't know as an actor what you were doing. So those are things that he definitely added. And, you know, that's from my point. Just add, and I would definitely, I didn't work with Linda nearly as much as you did, obviously, but I felt like that there was a real spirit of collaboration from the top, and I started with Pete. He literally stopped everybody on set, made an announcement, first day shooting, hey, listen, if you see I'm not doing something, let me know if you got any ideas or input or whatever. Like, I've never in my life seen a director do that. I was like, because all hell could break loose. <laughs> but, but, he set the tone um, for what was going to be a collaboration, and I think for Vigo and I, uh, uh, just sitting down at the table, going through the script, that I think it really started with respect and 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 love for what brought us there, but then I think that quickly developed into a love for one another and respect for each other's work. I think he really freed me up to. To, by just observing how meticulous he is, how passionate he is. There are so many stories I have about things like him actually picking out that jade rock <laughs> on the streets of New Orleans to buying crucifixes. Hey, Pete, check it out. I got like these different crucifixes to go through with you as far as like what are just gonna, you're not even gonna see them in the movie. They're gonna be like somewhere on the back of the wall you will never know, but Vigo picked it out. Like, <laughs> kid you not. And so the, it really started with love and respect for just being there and, and always holding on to that for each other. And I think because of the way in which he uh, approaches his work, which we, we are very similar in that way, um, but his specificity is a little more heightened. <laughs> he, he, a little more hype. He was he was the the wax paper sandwich for Doctor yes. Shirley. The wax paper sandwich that's wrapped you know, sandwich wrapped in wax paper for Doctor Shirley. That was supposed to be tin foil, and he's like, no, not sixty two. That's wax paper. <laughs> Everybody brought something, the guys, the Italian guys that show up in Memphis, you know, and all these people that came down, some of them were friends of Nick, some of them Pete knew, and there were just these faces that I think to be, that's part of the fun of this movie, because you see faces that you're not that familiar with, or that you didn't expect to see there, you know, um, just, you know, like seeing Sebastian doing what he does there, seeing how, what that family's like, what Linda does with everybody. You know, everybody, and a lot of those people are not actors, right? Yeah. Are you going to say that? No, no, no. No, but, and, and, and you don't know what's going to happen. That could be, could be 
difficult, <laughs> you know? And we didn't have a big, you know, tight, we didn't have a tight schedule and so forth. And it was beautiful because they did, they brought stuff that put a, kept us on our toes, right? We didn't know, I mean, do you want to, <laughs> I'm going on dead head. No. Okay, well, I, I want to I, I want to sit, talk about the women here right now for a second. First of all, they're downplaying. Octavia, you've downplayed it way more than you should have. It's not true. Like honestly, when Octavia came on board, it changed a lot for us. You know, when she came on, all of a sudden you're getting like you know tension in the town. People are like, oh, Octavia's giving this the thing. And also, I would call and ask her, what about this? What about that? And as it turned out, it was a good script. But she would say, I like it. Do this. Don't do that. Do that. And that gave me confidence to, to move forward with things that, you know, I was questioning. So I never had to question that again after you went. And, and then it also lets you later on when you finish it, and you think, you know, this movie could be bigger than what they're perceiving it to be. Then you could call the Steven Spielbergs because Octavia is the producer, and and they wanted they're curious what that's going to be. Linda, Linda's the heart of the movie. You know, she is the heart and soul of this movie, and there's the the end of the, this, that's why the very last shot is her smiling face because. The whole movie, really, that's what it's about, is pleasing her. Because she's disappointed in him, a part of him. She loves her husband, but there's a disappointment in his racism. And, you know, and to, for, to see the growth that he got on this journey, and to see how pleased she is by that, that's the, that's the beauty of this movie for me. And this is the last thing I'm going to say. I'm sorry I'm rambling here. I've never been on a movie set one minute without feeling unbelievable joy and happiness and luck. Like, I just, I never got used to it. You know, I've been doing it for 25 years, but I never, it never became like a job. It became like, how the hell did this happen? <laughs> I can't believe I'm directing movies. It makes no sense, and I never got used to it. I never got over every day. I'm, I'm so happy to be on a movie set, but this is my happiest night of all time, being involved in movies. <laughs>